All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. So um, my name is Jamin Choi. I'm a PhD candidate in computer science here at UIUC. And uh, today's talk, will uh, I'll talk about how we can improve the performance of applications on GPU systems uh, by applying over decomposition to achieve computation communication overlap. So as uh, many of you probably know already, um, there's an increasing gap between the single node performance and the internode communication bandwidth on uh, modern supercomputers, especially with the single node performance outpacing the uh, internode uh, communication performance. So I believe this can be tackled from at least uh, two different directions. Uh, the first of which is where we can improve the communication performance itself with uh, optimizations in the software and also better realization of the hardware support. And this includes things like GP Direct, uh, Sharp for collective communication, and uh, hardware tag matching. And secondly, we can try to reduce the impact of communication on the overall performance using techniques such as uh, computation communication overlap. And this will be the focus of uh, today's talk. So there are many ways in um, achieving computation communication overlap. Uh, MPI does, can do this by using uh, the non-blocking communication primitives. And, um, and placing comp independent computation while the communication is going in the background. Uh, over decomposition is another method uh, we can use to uh, achieve computation communication overlap. So with over decomposition, um, uh, you can, so basically what it does is you can overlap the computation of one subdomain with communication of another subdomain. So uh, for example, let's say we are trying to run a very simple uh, 2D particle simulation on four CPU cores. So with MPI, what you would generally do is you decompose the problem domain into four subdomains and map uh, each subdomain to a single MPI process. But with over decomposition, you can decompose the problem domain into however many subdomains you like. So in the example, you can see in the diagram here, we decompose it into 16 subdomains or 16 charts. And then the runtime system, uh, the Trump plus plus runtime system will map these 16 charts to the four CPU cores. So these chars can, uh, of course, uh, can communicate uh, via messages with each other. And these messages contain data that's necessary for computation. And they also uh, can initiate computation on the, the receiver chars. And uh, these chars are mapped to the PEs or processing elements, which is uh, generally a CPU core in Chunkos does. And uh, there is a scheduler and a message queue that is associated to each, uh, with each PE. And the scheduler continuously looks at the message queue to check for incoming messages and executes uh, the next message in the queue, uh, which is uh, the entry method, designated entry method uh, of the target char. So uh, this process is a synchronous message driven execution in Trump Plus. So um, how does GPU execution come into this picture? So um, generally, uh, a Trump plus plus programmer can write, um, write code inside the charge method to offload work to the GPU. Um, but the problem is uh, how to detect when the uh, offloaded work completes. So the simplest method is to just use synchronization uh, calls. Uh, so for CUDA, for example, assuming NVIDIA GPUs, you can use CUDA stream synchronize, which uh, makes the PE wait um, and block until the GP work that was enqueued in the specified to the stream complete. But this is not, um, not great for um, achieving computation communication overlap with over decomposition because this prevents the, the PE from, or the scheduler from executing work of other chars that are waiting in the, in the queue and also progressing communication uh, in the case without uh, communication threads. So what we uh, really want is uh, the process that's, uh, that's depicted in the diagrams here. So first, um, a char can asynchronously offload work to the GPU, which is relatively easy. You can do uh, asynchronous kernel launches and data transfers using the regular CUDA API calls, for example. And then once the char um, offloads work, we want that char to actually relieve control or uh, move aside so that uh, the, the scheduler can perform work for other chars and also progress communication. So that's the second step where, this progress, uh, where the scheduler progresses to communication and executes an uh, entry method of the, of the next char in the message queue. And uh, the important thing is when the, the runtime has to know when the GPU work completes, 
so that it can enqueue uh, a, a new message in the message queue asynchronously. So um, this means that after the, the purple char, which is the second char uh, that was in the queue, uh, finishes executing, the, uh, the target of the message that was enqueued by the runtime, um, which is the message D in this case, uh, this, um, for example, in this case, it will execute another entry method of the original char that offload, offloaded work to the GPU. So that's step three here. So this allows uh, computation communication overlap when we have over decomposition. So uh, as we've just looked, uh, looked at, so we want to support such asynchronous progress or uh, detection of GPU work uh, in the runtime. So we want to avoid synchronization CUDA API calls. And uh, some of you may ask, uh, why can't we just use the asynchronous versions of the CUDA API calls, such as CUDA callback or CUDA events, to determine if uh, the GPU work is complete? But this isn't feasible in Tron++, uh, first of all, because of the scheduler-driven execution. And second of all, uh, when, you are, when you want to use the CUDA callback um, function uh, feature in, in CUDA, the CUDA-generated thread is dissociated from the Tron++ runtime. Excuse me. So the API that we provide, the runtime provides, is uh, called Happy Add Callback, which allows the user to schedule a Trump plus plus callback along with a CUDA stream. And this means uh, the Trump plus plus callback object will be invoked when all the GPU operations uh, in the specified CUDA stream complete. And we currently have uh, two different compile time configurable mechanisms, which are based on uh, CUDA callback and uh, CUDA events. And the CUDA events one is the default. And you can also find more details uh, about this uh, inside the Trump++ documentation. So another thing that we have to, another important consideration that we have to think about when we want to achieve computation communication overlap is uh, we need to pr prioritize the communication related uh, GP operations in the application. So um, the most straightforward way of using CUDA streams in, in Trump++ is you just associate one CUDA stream to each char. And this allows all the GPU operations that are enqueued uh, to the same stream to uh, execute in order. So it's uh, very simple to, uh, to implement. But the problem with this approach is that it will cause delays in the communication related operations, such as host device uh, or device to host data transfers, as well as uh, some kernels that are related to communication, such as uh, packing and unpacking. And this is because um, since many uh, many chars are using maybe using the same GPU, and and so uh, many CUDA streams can be mapped to the same GPU, uh, some computational kernels that were offloaded by other chars on other CUDA streams uh, may be executing when uh, when an, another char needs to execute the communicated re communication related uh, operations inside its uh, its CUDA stream. So what we need is we need to separate uh, the CUDA streams for compute and communication and also with a higher priority set for the communication stream. So this works for many applications, but you may actually need a more complex design of uh, using CUDA streams and associating them with chars as we had to do for MiniMD, which is one of the applications proxy apps that we looked at, which is uh, described in the ESPM2 paper. So um, these two uh, diagrams or figures show the execution timelines of Jacobi 2D, which is a very simple uh, proxy application that performs the Jacobi iteration on a 2D grid with uh, four chars mapped to a single PE that is using a single GPU. So on the left, we have um, the timeline of four different uh, CUDA streams. So four different chars and a single CUDA stream per char. So as you can see in the diagram, uh, there are some delays in the communication related operations. In this case, the device to host transfers and the packing kernels. And this eventually causes idle times between iterations because some chars are waiting for uh, data to arrive from its neighbors because of the delay in communication. On the right side, we have uh, implemented separate com compute and communication CUDA streams per char. So now we have two different CUDA streams per char with the communication stream given the higher priority. And as you can see, this allows, um, this prevents the delay in communication and thus we do not see any idle time between, um, between iterations. In this specific case, we have, um, we, uh, we see that the communication is completely hidden behind the computation. 
So uh, to evaluate the uh, performance uh, impact of our approach of, uh, of applying over decomposition and achieving computation, computation overlap to improve application performance, we use the following two uh, leadership class systems. Uh, one is Summit at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which has six uh, GPUs per node. And Lassen at uh, Livermore, uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, which has four GPUs per node. And using the PEMI LRTS and SMP version of Trumpus Plus. And here we also just use one process, which has one PE and uh, one CPU core uh, per GPU. So for example, on Summit, we use six PEs mapped to six GPUs per compute node. So just a brief uh, introduction of the benchmarks that we use. So we're looking at some iterative uh, proxy applications. The first of which is Jacobi 3D, which performs the Jacobi iteration on a 3D grid, which is uh, over decomposed into chars. And this performs near neighbor exchange of the halo data, where each char is, ex is, is exchanging its data with uh, up to six neighbors. And MiniMD is the second one, uh, which is a proxy app for the LAMPS molecular dynamics code. So this was converted from MPI Cocos to Trump plus plus Cocos to enable over decomposition. And uh, it should be noted that the CUDA aware MPI in the original code was converted to explicit, uh, to use explicit host device transfers as well as uh, host messages because Trump plus plus does not currently have production level support for uh, direct GPU to GPU transfers. I'll talk about that uh, at the end of my presentation a little bit. And uh, Cocos is uh, retained as the performance portability layer, which is responsible for the computational kernels as well as the intra-process data movement. So MiniMD performs neighbor exchanges of, its, uh, of the atoms and also performs the Leonard Jones uh, force calculation. So let's start by looking at the performance results of Jacobi 3D on a single node of Summit uh, on the six GPUs that it has. So this uh, plot compares the, uh, the three different implementations so this, uh, all the three different implementations use the, the separate compute and communication streams, as we just talked about. But the difference is the, the runtime support. So the blue line uh, directly uses CUDA stream synchronize, which is a synchronization CUDA API call instead of using the runtime support. Whereas the two, uh, the red and the orange lines use, the, use HAPI, which is the short for hybrid API and the, the support for GPUs inside the Trump++ runtime. And uh, we are varying the over decomposition factor, which is basically uh, the degree of over decomposition. So with a ODF of one, it is basically an MPI-like decomposition where we just have uh, where we have six Ps, uh, six chars on six Ps, for example. And as we go higher, for example, uh, to a over the ODF of sixteen, we have sixteen chars per P. So we are reducing the granularity of each uh, work unit or char. And as you can see, um, uh, the happy versions, the, the ones with the Trump Plus runtime support perform much better than the, than the CUDA API one. And also um, the over decomposition factor of four performs the best compared to uh, the original uh, ODF factor of one and up to about 50% of uh, performance improvement. So that's the single node performance of Jacobi 3D. And let's move to uh, some scaling performance. So the weak scaling performance plots are on the top and the strong scaling performance plots are on the bottom. And the top two plots are, uh, and the left plots are for Summit and the right plots are for Lassen. Well, let's start with the weak scaling plots. So um, ODF1 is the baseline where we do not do any over decomposition, which is the green line. And then uh, ODF2 and 4 is, um, performs the best uh, for weak scaling. For small scale, ODF4 performs the best. And after a certain point, ODF2 starts to perform better. So we're still investigating as to why this crossover is happening between ODF2 and ODF4. Uh, we have observed that there are, there, the, the, the idle times between iterations are continuously increasing in the case of uh, ODF4 at large uh, node counts. And uh, for strong scaling, we see that uh, ODF2 is uh, performing the best over the composition factor of two at, at most configurations up until um, about three uh, K GPUs on summit where ODF one catches up and performs the best. So this is somewhat expected because um, 
over decomposition is trying to uh, make the work units even smaller, um, where the strong scaling is also making the work units smaller. So uh, we expect the, the effect of the performance improvement from over decomposition to kind of degrade as we go into the tail end of uh, strong scaling. So uh, let's move to mini MD. The second uh, proxy application. So mini MD uh, plots also have the MPI baselines, but the, the MPI ones are mostly for reference because the computation pattern in the MPI version and the Chan plus plus versions are slightly different. The MPI versions uh, perform a pair of a set of MPI send receive calls for each uh, neighbor exchange, whereas the Chan plus plus versions do a complete uh, non-blocking exchange for all the different neighbors at the same time. So this change was made to allow more room for computation communication overlap in exchange of more uh, memory usage. And the, the two different MPI lines, uh, the black line is MPI HS, which is the, uh, the version that uh, was changed to, to move the GPU data the, through the host. And the MPI CA is the original CUDA aware MPI version, where the, the data, the neighbor data, uh, the HALA data is exchanged between processes directly between GPUs. And if we first look at the weak scaling plots, the, the top two plots, you can see that the Trump plus versions with the over decomposition factor of four performs the best across most configurations, except for a single node on Summit. So it even beats the uh, MPI, the CUDA aware MPI versions, although the Trump plus versions are not using the direct GPU to GPU transfers. But this is um, possible because of the overlap of computation communication, uh, improving performance. If you look at the strong scaling uh, plots, it's a similar story to Jacobi 3D. Although um, ODF4 is the best performing one at small scale, and then which is caught up by ODF2 and then eventually ODF1. Again, because uh, over the composition is making the work units smaller. So um, to conclude, so we, uh, we've seen up to about 50% and 47% improvement in uh, overall performance by using uh, over decomposition to achieve computation communication overlap using two different proxy applications, Jacobi 3D and uh, MiniMD. So the contribution of this work is that uh, we demonstrated that with careful design of the application to prioritize the communication and also support for asynchronous progress of the GPU work inside the runtime system we're able to effectively achieve uh, computation communication overlap, which significantly improves performance, especially in weak scaling scenarios. So as uh, future work, we are also um, trying to tackle the first uh, direction that we just talked about in the introduction, where we are trying to improve the performance of communication itself by using GP messaging, which essentially allows uh, direct transfers between GPUs. So let me uh, briefly talk about um, the GP messaging that's uh, coming up in the next uh, release of Trump plus plus 611. So this will allow direct transfers uh, between uh, GPUs using technologies such as GP direct and CUDA, by, uh, CUDA IPC bypassing host memory. So currently we're supporting uh, internode messages, messages within the same, uh, same node. And we're also actively working on support for, for internode communication. So we currently have two different uh, APIs. One is the regular API, which is basically for point-to-point -point messages between chars that are that want to exchange GPU data. And this is uh, currently experimental in the 611 beta because it's uh, we're undergoing some performance optimizations. And I'll show you the performance in, a, in the next slide. So the uses of this is similar to the zero copy post entry method API, where the sender char sends some metadata to the receiver and then the receiver performs a, a get operation to move the GPU data from the sender to the receiver. So some, uh, some more details can be found in the documentation here. And the second uh, API is the persistent API. So this will be used for persistent point-to-point uh, -point messages between chars, which have a uh, reuse of the same set of GPU buffers between iterations. So this will be particularly useful for iterative, iterative applications. And this will also be part of part of 611, and uh, it's currently on a branch right now, but it will be merged for the second beta. So let's move to the performance plots for this uh, GP messaging feature. So this is using the OSU latency benchmark, the MPI CUDA aware MPI version, and also the Trump plus converted ones, running this on, on a single node of Summit. 
So uh, the plot on the left is the interprocess uh, benchmark, whereas the plot on the right is the intraprocess within the same process. And that's why we have the MPI line only on the left plot. So the MPI uh, plot, uh, the Cruero MPI plot is in the black line here on the left. Uh, this compares the, against the Trump versions. So Charm H is the, is the version where the existing version where you have to move the GPU data to the host and then um, do a host host message and then do another hosted device transfer at the receiving end. And Charm D is the regular GP messaging API we just talked about. That is kind of similar, it's kind of similar to the zero copy API. And as you can see, it currently performs uh, worse at small message sizes up to eight kilobytes and then starts to perform better at larger message sizes in, ter in terms of latency. And uh, Charm P is the persistent GP messaging uh, API. So um, this performs uh, much better than all the uh, Trump Plus versions and the MPI version. You still have to, of course, compare this to the MPI persistent uh, messaging, which MPI has. But yeah, it's, it's still uh, it's currently performing relatively well. And the right side, uh, again, the Charm P, the persistent version, performs much better than the Charm D and Charm H versions. Yeah, so this concludes my presentation. Um, thank you for listening. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, Jimin. Um, so far, no questions in the Zoom chat or in the Google Doc, but if anybody has any last minute questions, feel free to speak up or just type it and we'll get to it. So it looks like Forrest has a question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, um, I had a question. What was the percentage of time that your Let's see. Do you have a good handle on what the percentage of time of uh, kernel launch overhead had in uh, the decomposition? Because um, when we were right. working on similar problems, um, we found that kernel launch overhead became the dominating, uh, um, I guess, time. Mm -hmm. So I don't have currently have like a concrete anal analysis of that, but um, so I did do a kind of uh, MB prof runs to kind of just yeah. see that uh, in overall. And yeah, we did see that uh, because you know with over decomposition we have finer work units and each work yeah. unit is um, offloading a certain set of work, so we have an increase in the number of cutout API calls that has to make. So that's one of the reasons why uh, a higher degree of over decomposition starts to uh, perform worse. Yeah, but I'm not aware of like exactly the performance ratio of how much it about attributes how, to performance. Yeah, about how long do your kernels take? Are they on the order, let's see, once it gets down to like a couple microseconds, that's where the right. launch overhead seems to dominate. If it's yeah. if it's 100 so, or tens of microseconds, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem to matter. So these ones run relatively long. Um, so some of them run for hundreds of microseconds and some of them so no for uh, milliseconds. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably not hitting there then. OK, thank right. you. Very good work. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Nils about um, running it in the 60s stencil code. Nils, would you like to ask it in voice? We might have to allow permission for him to speak. Yeah. Uh... So nice talk. Um, I guess this is sort of a use case or example use case uh, question. So I know the national labs, us, basically everybody in astrophysics, um, sort of the next big frontier um, is doing full neutrino radiation uh, transport. Um, and, and this involves solving the Boltzmann equation, which has three spatial dimensions, three momentum dimensions, and then one time dimension. Um, so it's, it's sort of particle particle interactions, but you can sort of model them as statistical distributions in space and time. And um, 3D stencil computations are sort of as difficult or as expensive as we can realistically sort of do nowadays on CPUs. Um, and so what would be interesting to see, it would be sort of a, a six dimensional um, time evolution 
on, on GPUs and, and seeing a comparison to uh, CPUs, because that's sort of where we think we will be able to get sort of the most bang for the buck in terms of um, taking advantage of GPUs, because you just have mm -hmm. a buttload of floating point operations to do. Uh, so. Right, so uh, I guess the memory layout will be more difficult to handle, but I'm pretty sure it's possible to do a 60 version of it. Shouldn't okay. be too hard, yeah. The interesting things are the ratio of the uh, ghost layer to the uh, inner layer uh, changes substantially, right, compared with 2D. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think worth, worth seeing how that, that goes. I thought we, we need to do 4D, which is what milk has, for example, and 6D will be nice, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so this is sort of where, you know, our, our hope is that discontinuous Galerkin or the spectral type methods would work there because you, you basically don't have ghost cells anymore then. Uh, uh, I that, see. Yeah. That. But, you know, e either way, it's sort of, you know, the, the people who are currently solving uh, the Boltzmann equation are doing it with just second order finite difference. Mm. Um, have you know one ghost cell but yeah the, just a thought of like this would be a very interesting example where there would be a lot of people very interested in seeing the performance results and how this works um, on GPU. Yeah I'll definitely look into it. Thanks Nels. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you go back to your um, performance plot for uh, short messages or whatever the message sure. like where I could see the uh, 10 microsecond versus 50, not even 10. Yeah, this one on the left, no, no, on the right. Right, this is slightly over 10 microseconds, but yeah. Yeah, um, the inter process on the left, the difference between the uh, red and the black is significant, I mean, huge. Uh, do you know what accounts for that? So I think one of the reasons is you're uh, performing kind of like a get operation, right? Instead of the sender directly pushing the data to the to the remote buffer. So I think that's one thing that can be um, optimized to lower, lower this down. But uh, currently, there uh, the a lot of the overhead involves the calling of CUDA API calls. So if we can cut down on the number of CUDA API calls, that would help a lot too. It's not number of hops somehow too. Like, not really, no. Well, there are like two, two hops, I guess, one from the sender to the receiver and then the receiver invoking the mem copy. Yeah, which is itself two hops, right? in effect. Well, I see. Okay, yeah. Yeah, working on that would, would be good. Uh, of course, you can combine the red and blue, I suppose, right? By just having a threshold for uh, at what size to switch to what protocol. Right, yeah. Great. Any other last minute questions before we move on? All right. Thank you.